Hi friends and fellow flute enthusiasts, thanks for tuning in to Johnny's Flute Reviews. I'm Johnny Lippard and since 2002 I've dedicated myself to everything flute. I teach, perform, and record full time with the Native American flute. I post videos here on YouTube covering flute tips, tutorials, original songs, and cover songs to showcase how versatile the Native American flute is. If you're new here and interested in becoming a more emotive flute player, or you just love listening to the sounds of the Native American flute, be sure you subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified every time a new video drops. Now, let's dive into a flute from my personal collection. Welcome back. In this episode of Johnny's Flute Reviews, we're going to be looking at one of the largest flutes in my collection. This is a flute made by Brad Young of Four Wind Flutes. The body of the flute is made from Spanish cedar. The end caps, block, and side, uh, side blown mouthpiece are made from camphor. So this is a very aromatic flute. Uh, it's in the key of low E minor. So typically we have our mid E minor flutes. So just to kind of give you some perspective, this is our mid range E minor flute very common key uh, and size of flute and this is our bass e minor flute so check out the size difference of these two uh, an octave apart and then we have the higher e which is just kind of a, a much smaller flute yet and so this is a newly acquired flute uh, for me um, i received this flute at sweetgrass flute and nature festival uh, here in hiawatha iowa and believe it or not, even though this flute is large, it's very, very light in weight. And um, it's almost 43 inches in length. The bore size is an inch and five eighths. So quite a large bore flute, but you gotta hear this thing. Um, I fell in love with the sound of this and to get it amplified, on um, you know a microphone into an amp with some reverb man it just um, I'm, I'm scared to play this in public it might it might melt people <laughs> I'm kidding it won't but anyway I want to give you a sound sample of this again this is a, a dry environment um, there's no reverb or anything added <laughs> Man, I just love that low tone of the flute. Um, there are a few flute makers making flutes uh, this big. Um, Brad is one of those, and he keeps his bass flutes in a very uh, comfortable uh, price range. Um, I was just looking here. He's famous for marking the price on the side of the flute. I don't think I, maybe he cut this one off already, but um, you know they're not as expensive as you might think uh, something like this would probably be in the uh, you know the four hundred dollar range you know it may be a little higher than that maybe a little lower than that um, but definitely send brad an email if you're interested in something like this now i have a couple of other larger flutes in my collection but this one exceeds them by uh, some degree it's not easy to travel with, so when I fly, I don't take something like this, but definitely use this a lot in yoga and meditation practices and, and providing music in those environments. Uh, those of you that work in hospice environments as well, uh, this would be a, a suitable flute for something like that. One of the features that I really love about, um, about the bass flutes is having the capability to have them um, side blown like this not transverse like our our silver flute where we work with our embouchure but just having this mouthpiece on the side 
It does a couple of things, and you may find this uh, to be true. I put a video out about tips for playing bass flutes, and that was more for like the end blown bass flutes, uh, but some of the breath work also applies to something that's side blown as well. With an end blown bass flute, it really stretches out. This would be impossible for me to play as a, um, an end blown flute like this, because man, look at that reach right here. I'm cramping here, and I just feel a lot of tension in my wrist and just extending that, um, that ring finger. I feel like I can't quite reach the bottom hole. Uh, but even with, uh, well, with bringing that mouthpiece from the end to the side, it changes everything. Now I'm going from something like this, now over to something like this, bringing that elbow back and pulling that flute closer to the side of my body. And even with these uh, finger holes placed ergonomically. So those of you that play right hand on bottom, this flute would be great. If you play left hand on bottom, it's not going to quite work for you. Um, so when you're buying a bass flute and you opt to have um, a side blown mouthpiece put in, please let the flute maker know if you play left hand or right hand on the bottom of the flute. That will make a big, big difference on where they put the mouthpiece. Uh, whether you hold it this way or that way, also which way to curve those finger holes uh, in the placement of them. So um, definitely talk to, uh, if you can't try the flute out, I always say if you can try the flute out in person, that would be the optimal way to buy a flute. Um, but if not, just have a conversation uh, with the flute maker, even if that means like picking up the phone and actually having a conversation with them and let them know some of your concerns. and. Uh, every flute maker that I've worked with, people are great. Uh, flute makers are really um, awesome about that and accommodating as well. So again, this is a bass E minor flute made from Spanish cedar and camphor uh, in cap mouthpiece and block. Um, very, very lightweight, so it doesn't put a lot of strain on my wrist. Just one more time before we close. <laughs> So just so you know, there are a couple of links in the description below, some links to um, some resources and tips that might help you along your flute journey. Um, and make sure you subscribe. Uh, flute reviews are something that I do weekly here on my channel, so you'll want to stay tuned uh, to see more of those. So stay tuned as we uncover more flutes from my collection. We'll see you next time. <laughs>